what we do here is help you break through those limiting beliefs and, and see the possibility of all the different kinds of deals you can do, no matter what size business you have. Welcome high performing entrepreneurs and business owners. Do you suffer from shiny object syndrome? Do you often feel scattered and distracted, making it hard to implement your plan with all the ideas and strategies coming at you? Do you often wonder if you have the right goals and plan? Welcome to Extraordinary Focus with David Wood, where we help you achieve way more in less time. Get the laser focus you need so you can double your business, double your impact in the world, and be an even more extraordinary entrepreneur and human. Let's dive in and stay tuned at the end for your gift. Welcome back to another episode of Extraordinary Focus with David Wood. This one's different in that I was interviewed by Corey Kupfer from DealQuest, and I liked it so much because we're talking about the art of making a deal and how important deals are to every business owner every human actually. And we went through such good stuff. We talked about how to generate possibility. You have to believe it's possible. We talked about the courage it requires, how to be charmingly persistent, not annoyingly persistent. And then the art of transparency and how that builds trust and connection and will lead to better deals. So without further ado, let's jump into this interview and um, I hope you really enjoy it. David Wood is a former consulting actuary to Fortune 100 companies. He built the world's largest coaching business, becoming number one on Google for life coaching and coaching thousands of hours in 12 countries around the globe. As well as helping others, David is no stranger to overcoming challenges himself. He survived the full collapse of his paraglider and a fractured spine, witnessing the death of his sister at age seven, anxiety and depression, and a national gong show. <laughs> you hear about that one. He, he coaches high-performance business owners to double revenue uh, and their time off by focusing on less and being 30% more courageous in their business or career. David Wood, welcome to the Deal Quest podcast. Thanks, Corey. Pleased to meet you, and I'm glad to be on the show. Uh, it's, great, it's great to be here, and I know that um, so much of what you do uh, impacts deals, and we're going to get into it. Um, uh, in a moment, but I want to take you back before we talk about uh, what you're doing now to when you were a little kid growing up, uh, maybe 8, 10, 12 years old. Uh, what did you want to be? Uh, because, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, what you've done in the past or business coaching now, my guess is it probably wasn't on the radar back then, but you tell me. I think I wanted to be an astronaut and I think I wanted to be a fireman. So, uh, I did not have, I didn't even know what an actuary was. Most people still don't. Um, I didn't know, uh, about coaching. It wasn't a thing back then. So business and life coaching wasn't a career. And I also didn't know I wanted to be an entertainer of some store, some sort and be a motivational speaker and a stand up comedian and an actor. I didn't know about any of those things back then. So all of them were surprises. Love it. Love it. And, you know, it's, it's very rare that we have a guest on the show out of the 160 something episodes where uh, they're actually doing what they, uh, there's been a couple of exceptions, uh, you know, where they are actually doing what they thought it was a kid, but for the most part, no. Um, and one other question, looking back, what was the first deal of any type that you can remember? It could have been something small when you were a kid or something early in your career, whatever comes to mind. A deal. Huh? Well, you know, hearing that, I'm seeing how many things in life really are deals. Mm -hmm. So um, just getting my first job working for a pharmacist was a deal. You know, I, he offered, I accepted. And then when I wanted more pay, I think I wanted $20 an hour instead of 15. I, I said, you know, would you be willing to pay more? And he said, well, that's what I pay. I said, okay, that's fine. Well, I'll finish off my shift today and then that'll be it. And I'll help you find someone else if you want. And he said, all right, all right, I'll, I'll pay, I'll pay 20. So that that might be the first negotiation that I can remember, but there's so many things are a deal, accepting uh, a scholarship to go to university uh that's a deal right I like sure. how do i how do i get 
in there and how do I sell myself so that they're actually going to pay me to go to university. And then I don't even have to work for them when I'm done. I get a choice. Right. And then yeah. once university was done, I said, all right, thank you. I'm going to go traveling for a year. And then we, we did another deal. They, they pitched it very well. They said, well, what if you worked for us for a year first and built uh, up your bank account and save some money and then traveled for a year uh -huh. and then your job would be waiting for you when you come back i was like oh well played okay and so we did we did that i love it yeah so they uh they were smart enough to to look at what might be appealing to you which is definitely a you know a, a, a good approach in negotiating and deal making uh yeah you know to be able to do that so all right yeah. so uh i want to get into some specific things around deals around, you know, your principles, your bio didn't mention the book you have coming out. I want to talk about that, but why don't you first give folks, um, uh, a better idea of who you work with. Uh, you know, there are a lot of business coaches out there, life coaches out there. What is your, you know, distinction? What do you do? Who do you work for? What, what's the unique approach you take with us? Yeah. Guys? Thank you. One thing that I think makes me different. Uh, most people should specialize in one or the other life coaching or business coaching. Yeah. Um, and I understand that, but I, I think I have a unique background in that the first half of my life was so left brain and systems oriented because mm -hmm. I had, I had a tragedy when I was a kid and I, apparently I shut down my emotional side, but what developed was, was the intellectual side. So I came top of my school. I got a scholarship, uh, got a, a plum job on park Avenue in New York at the age of 23. Yeah. So the silver lining of the tragedy is I got really good with numbers and business and systems and money. Sure. So if, if it's like, how do we make this happen in time and space in the, in the fastest possible way, I'm great at that. Give me yeah. all the puzzle pieces. Yeah. But then at the age of 26, someone realized I wasn't happy and said, why don't you go and do this personal growth program? And I'm 53 now. So that was about the halfway point of my life. And I nearly didn't do it because they all wore name tags and they smiled way too much. <laughs> and I'm like, this is some kind of a cult bullshit thing. These are just weak willed sheep who can't think for themselves. I was very cynical. Thank God they were ready for me and they cracked my heart open. And I realized I knew nothing about emotional intimacy, mm. vulnerability, authenticity, true influence and leadership. I knew nothing about this stuff. So the last 25 years of my life have been catching up, sitting with teachers, sitting with gurus, navel gazing, doing things that would freak any human being out to just find the limits of what it is to be human. So now I'm unwilling to choose one or the other. I work with business owners because I relate to entrepreneurs and I am one. Um, and we'll start with making more money. Sure. Every, I haven't met many clients that aren't saying I want to double revenue. So we start with that. But then I wonder how much time off do you want? And then more importantly, what are you going to do with that time on your remaining time on the planet? Are you living? If you knew you had five years left, you got a diagnosis today, you got five years. Yes. Would you keep living the way you're living or would you change the fuck how you live? And so I'm that, I think I'm an unusual coach in that I'm basically a life and business coach for business owners. And in one session, we might just be totally strategizing about hiring, or it might be an alliance that they want. I just got off the phone uh, with a client who is facing a very personal decision. She does not want to take the COVID vaccination. Her body is screaming no. And what she teaches is listening to your body but if she doesn't take it, she can't pursue her dream to move to Costa Rica and teach at this amazing resort. I'm made for stuff like that. So we started with the feelings and acknowledged what's, you know, how tough this is. And then we started on solutions. So there's a long answer to your question. I work with business owners who are already successful in many areas. They want help choosing better goals and they want to move towards those goals at twice the pace ideally with half the time invested. Great. And are, are you, are you open to sharing what that original personal growth uh, course was? Yeah, sure. It's called the landmark forum. 
Okay. I had a feeling that was the case because I've done the landmark forum and, and several of the, you know, in the advanced course. And uh, so the way you were speaking, we had uh, listeners, we had not discussed this previously, so I didn't know. Um, but uh, David and I have that uh, work in common. And I am also a, a big fan uh, after being skeptical for all the same reasons in the beginning. Yeah. That David was, so. yeah. I, you know, I feel sorry. I really do. I feel sorry for anyone skeptical of personal growth. Now, if they're skeptical, they might not be listening to this podcast. Um, but that's how I was, which closed off an entire world. I didn't know that making the world a better place was a job. Right. I, right. I didn't know that was a thing that some people just devote their lives to that. And they, I learned by being around Landmark long enough that those people are committed to transform yeah. the world for the better. Yeah. And I honestly didn't know that, that was possible. Yeah. Hang on. Let me take a break for a second because my dog just barked and editor, we, we're going to, I'm going to ask you to repeat that part. I'm going to let her in because she will not bark if I let her in. Uh, you got it. And uh, we'll go let it back. Thank you. All right, so let's just pick it up from the part where you talked about uh, not knowing that um, changing the world is, you know, is a, is a job, and then the editor will, will clean that up. I'm lucky they cracked my cynicism because I didn't know changing the world was a job you could have, and I didn't know like. If you hang around landmark people long enough, you get that they're out to transform the world. They are on a mission yeah. and they will not take no for an answer, which can be annoying, but thank God that they're around. Um, and, you know, if I hadn't done it, I don't know that I would have done the next 10 courses that I discovered in my life because I was just tunnel vision on my patterns. They opened me up to learning. So, I, I've sent clients there and I've lost clients because they go to Landmark. They're so empowered. They're like, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> I've sent my family there. I believe it's transformed my, my family's life and my communication with them. It's not the be all and end all. When you do it, you might come out going, oh my God, this is the thing which will change the world. Everyone must do it. And that's fine. I realized later, oh, there's, there are many other sources and many other courses and many other teachers. It's not just Landmark. I don't know if I've found anything as powerful in as short a time. Yeah. Like in three days, um, I don't know anywhere else to send people if they really want a breakthrough, if they want a totally different paradigm and to have something they could not have foreseen. Yeah. I don't know where anywhere else to go. So I keep sending people there. Yeah. And listen, there's, there's stuff in my life still many, I mean, I did the, forum in 1994 and the advanced course in 96 and oh dude uh, i did the forum in 96 oh that's funny and so yeah and i've i've gone on to do all kinds of other work uh, totally be open to personal growth uh, you know uh courses reading uh that kind of stuff mentors and uh yeah i mean i can trace so many things in my life uh and the impact that i've had in the world you know to to that work so yes big big recommendation and folks know on this podcast that um you know, sure, we talk about, you know, it's sort of uh, parallel to the distinction that uh, that David drew, you know, it was, you know, uh, th that, that you know, actual business numbers crunching side, you know, uh, and then and then the internal work side, you know, we talk about both of those in the podcast, right? We talk about deal structuring, we get investment bankers on and talk about valuation methodologies. We, But then yeah. we also talk about the inner work that people, you know, need to do to become a deal maker, the mindset of a deal maker. Um, you know, a lot of these things that that help people uh, grow uh, and be successful, not only in business, but in their life. So well, let's talk about that. that. I, I think that's a good segue into, into perhaps our next topic, which is generating possibility. Yeah, let's let's go there. So, I, I mean, I love that you bring both both elements of it. So, yeah, so let's jump in. You so you have some, you know, real fundamental principles that guide uh, the way you coach, I know some of them are, uh, you know, talked about in, in, in your book. So let's, let's jump into those, um, those principles and talk Great. about how they relate to deals and let people know about, uh, about the book as well. Yeah. And I, and I wrote down a lovely list in our pre-call. It was just like ideas kept coming out. So the first one is if you want to make a deal, you have to generate the possibility. 
And I don't think this is like you discover that it's possible. No, you generate it. And this is one of the huge things I got out of Landmark Education. So other people see roadblocks, you know, it's quite natural. Oh, can't do that. No, it's not possible. Can't do that. Oh, got to be vaccinated to go to Costa Rica. Um, after Landmark, like, like the third course that I did there was all about being unstoppable. Mm -hmm. Now, sure, I might have had some of that as a kid. My mom said, best way to get you to do something was tell you it couldn't be done. Right. So I had some of that, but Landmark was constantly about what is actually possible here. And I'll give you an example. I was committed to coming to every week. You have to make an agreement. I will show up every week to this, this Landmark course. And there was one that I did not want to go to because some huge opportunity came up. And they said, what about your commitment? I was like, well, yeah, I committed, but look what I could do, right, with that night. And they said, you are cutting off possibility. You have it as either or. Mm -hmm. And they're right. I could not see how I could keep my agreement and do this. And they, helped, they worked with me and they coached me like, let's generate possibility. The more we looked, they came up, we came up with ideas like I could maybe fly to another city and make up make up the uh the night somewhere else i didn't know you could do that right or i could have a conversation with all 30 people in the in the class and enroll them and the leader in changing the night to friday right, right. didn't didn't know that was a possibility right. that wasn't even right in the realm of possibility before right it opened up to you yeah so if if you go and do landmark and even if you don't you need to learn how to be a possibility generating machine another example that comes to mind is someone um i i started acting recently and that required generating a lot of possibility i'll tell you to go to that audition given i hadn't done a class yet uh mm -hmm. and i went to audition but i had to generate that it's possible and mm -hmm. working with a coach can help you do that is it po yeah at least for one of the smaller roles I, I might, I might get in. So I generated that. But then once I was actually in the cast, and by the way, I got cast as the lead in a professional paid production of Dracula out of all of that, which wow. was not in my world of possibility. I'm like, I'm never getting Dracula. I don't know how to do that. And they said, no, you, you did a good Dracula. But then we were going to have a celebration brunch near where we perform and the director said, well, they don't take reservations. So we're just going to have to get there early and line up in the cold for half an hour to try and get in. And my mind is like, really? Really? They don't take reservations. Hmm. I only need one person to say yes. And then I started thinking, they know Dracula has been performing there for six weeks. And guess who I am? I'm okay. Dracula. <laughs> so I called up and I spoke to uh, a waitress and said, Hey, I know Dracula has been performing. She said, Oh yeah. Yeah. By the way, I'm Dracula. I just want to say hi. She said, Oh, hi. And I said, we're going to have a celebration of the last six weeks. And I wonder if just because it's, it's a special event, if you might be open to making an exception and setting aside a table for us. So we don't have to line up for half an hour. And she's like, let me check with the manager came back. We'd love to do that. Mm. So that's an example. And I want, I'm saying this for listeners, because if you want to make deals, you have to say it's possible. You have to say it's possible that Alan Alda from MASH might come on my podcast. Mm. It's possible. And I'm still pitching him, by the way. I, I actually got to ask him face to face not on Zoom. And he said, reach out to my producer. We'll see what we can do. You have to generate that's possible. You have to generate that Richard Branson might say yes to writing the forward to your book. Mm. You have to make it, uh, generate that, that, that huge alliance possibility that there might be something in it for them that you haven't thought of, or they haven't thought of yet that would have them say, Oh, we'll give it a try. You know what? I'll send it to a, a, a 10th of my list. In fact, you might pitch it, send it to a 10th of your list, see if it does well. And if it doesn't, we'll, we'll just leave it. So that's number one. Yeah. You have to know that it's possible, even if it's remote. 
Yep. Is it possible? And, and that's a great point. Listen, and listeners, uh, any of our regular listeners know that one, and one of the fundamental reasons I do this podcast is like a starting point is to have uh, entrepreneurs, leaders, business executives understand that it's possible for them to grow in a different way than their organic growth, right? In addition to, right? Yes, you want to try to get more sales and marketing and, you know, and, and satisfy clients, do a great job, get referrals, all that kind of stuff. But, it's, but there's so many other ways to grow through deals and those are possibilities. And when that's not in your realm of, of possibility, because maybe you don't have exposure to that or you don't know or you have misconceptions that, you know, deals are only big mergers and acquisitions for well-funded companies, um, you know, and what, what we do here is help you break through those limiting beliefs and, and see the possibility of all the different kinds of deals you can do, no matter what size business you have. And then we also talk about this mind of a, of a deal maker, right? If you identify, you know, as not being a deal maker, you can cut yourself off from those possibilities as well. And that's why we talk about mindset shift. So I love the conversation of possibility. All right. What's the next one, David? Great. And I have a, I have a resource recommendation. I read a book a long time ago. It's called, I don't even know if it's in print, but if you can get yourself a copy, it's called Smart Match Alliances Okay. by Ernest F. Oriente and Judy Feld. I had trouble sleeping, Corey, after I read that book. It gets you thinking about making lists like like say i like i thought well yahoo i want an alliance with yahoo mm -hmm. and they get you making a list what are, are the 10 or 20 things that i could offer yahoo articles yes. webinars um coming to speak to their staff right you start generating possibility then you make a dream list what could they do for me mm -hmm. well they could offer coaching to their entire database. Okay, let's dream big. They could put my articles on their website. They could, you know, and the, the list goes on. One of the examples I gave is if you sold high-end golf clubs, wouldn't you want the local Ferrari dealership to give out a coupon as a thank you to every new customer? Yep. Boy, did that get me thinking. So there's a resource. The second thing that you're going to require is courage. Because mm. for most of us, it's hard to get a no. So, you know, I, I met Jack Canfield five, uh, well, 15 years ago, maybe. Fell in love with the man. Yep. Um, so admiring and impressed. And for five years, I tried to build a relationship with that man. It was not easy. It, it was not easy to get through all the filters and layers, but, but, but it took asking and asking and asking. Um, and then I wanted him to write the forward to my book. That was very scary to ask him to do that. I also wanted Richard Branson to write the forward to my book. And I wanted Steve Wynn from Wynn Hotels to write the forward to my book. Mm -hmm. it took courage. Every single time it took courage, which brings me to the next one, which is persistence. Mm. How many of us, Firstly, would not even send the email yep, or would not even make the phone call. Alan Old is a good example. I've idolized him since a kid when I was watching MASH. I, I just, I love who he is. I'd love to hang out with him. And, and I, I just it, it didn't know how to do it. So first it took some research and I read a couple of interviews by him to see what he's into. And then I found out he's got a Patreon group. Um, uh, where you can pay $45 a month and then that'll get you access to a zoom call once a month with him. I, I, all right. Now we're cooking with gas. Yep. And then on the call, they said, does anyone have a question for Alan? My hand was the first one to shoot up. And I said, Alan, what would it take to get you on my podcast to talk about this? That took a lot of courage. Now he said, reach out to my producer. The next thing that we need now that I've, I've, you know, I generated possibility and I generated the courage, persistence. Yes. Now I've only, over the last six months, I've only followed up with her four times. Better might be once a week or every two weeks. Now here's how to be charmingly persistent. Don't just keep on sending the same thing over and over and over again, knowing that you may be pissing them off. 
Yep. You need to set context. So what I might do is say, hey, just wanted to bump this to the top of your inbox. I know things can get busy. I might also say, I realize I've sent a few messages. I do not want to bother you. And, and this is, and we'll get to my book soon, which is all about transparency, mouse in the room. It's about being transparent. So if what you're thinking is I might be bothering you, say that. I don't want right. to bother you. Also, I think this could be a big opportunity, so I don't want to just let it drop. My aim is to be charmingly persistent. Please tell me if I should stop. And so now you are relating around the truth about what's yeah. actually happening yeah. instead of just being persistent, wondering if you're pissing them off. That's how to lose trust and how to lose a deal. I love it. And, and you know, I, I wish I can, is it something that relates to this to me on, uh, we had somebody, it's, it's got to go back a decade or more, uh, that did a talk at one of the entrepreneurs organization events. And I wish I can attribute it, but I unfortunately don't remember who this was. But they, they had a book out on really how they got to um, like connect with all these amazing folks, right? Some of like at the level that you're talking about, David, right? And, uh, and one of the big things they said is that, um, yeah, I mean, you know, they, I mean, he didn't necessarily phrase it the way, but of course it took courage to persistence. You had to see the possibility first. And you mentioned something uh, that he, this person really, really focused on, which was what can you offer them, right? And no matter how successful somebody is, his premise was you have something that you are masterful at that they may need. And he gave an example, and I, I don't remember who it was, of a major person, you know, all kinds of layers and gatekeepers and, you know, so hard to get to, um, but had found out that this person was writing that first book. And this guy happened to be somebody who was really good at helping people write books and edit and whatever. And his approach to this big time person was, I will help you for free, right? And guess what? Next thing he knew, he was in Hawaii, right, for six weeks at this guy's house, helping him for free write his book, right? Love um, it. And, and for me, so, you know, when we're looking to do any kind of alliance, right, these are deals we're talking about, strategic alliances, joint ventures, um, endorsement deals, things like that. I know, David, you have some experience with all of these kind of things. Um you know, that access, right? Because the people that you most want to endorse, right? Or to, you know, or to whatever are the people who, you know, the, the more successful they are, the harder they are to get to, right? So this conversation yeah. of how you get there through some of the principles that David's talking about. And I love this idea of finding out what your talent is that can really help that person. Can make yeah. 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 When I researched Alan Older, I found out that he's created this center for the communication for science. I teach communication. My upcoming book is all about transparency. So there's a possible overlap. Um, and I think he, you know, he, he does quite a lot of service in the world. Mm -hmm. I've been going into Colorado prisons teaching communication and I thought he might find that interesting. So I, I led with that. Um, let's talk about, I love that example about, I will help you for free. I did that with a celebrity. Um, I wanted to build a relationship and I just said, I want to thank you for something that you did for me. And I want to offer you coaching. I'm offering you a month of coaching for free. My only requirement is that you treat it as if you were paying 10 grand a month. Mm -hmm. And so we did that and I got to build a much closer relationship with that person. So yeah, making the list, what can I offer? Finding out what they're into. Um, I, and also you can get creative. I've got, there's a friend of mine used to buy old shoes yep. and he'd get a shoe and put it in a package and mail a package to someone because he said envelopes get opened by, by the secretary or the receptionist, but packages usually go straight through right. and the person would open up and there'd be a shoe in there and the note would say, now that we've got our foot in the door. <laughs> you would we'd like to consider um an alliance with you and so you can get creative and start having some fun for it the next principle i want to talk about is transparency and that's what mouse in the room is about this book if you're nice. watching the video you can see the the cover here and we call it mouse in the room because the elephant is not alone you know but you know about the elephant i know about the elephant no one's saying anything 
That's an elephant in the room. But the mouse in the room is any feeling you're having, any thought you're having, or any body sensation mm. that has not been named. That's, that's a mouse. And it could be quite subtle. And I'll give any, and, and when we start artfully naming these mice, and I say artfully, because if you do it the wrong way, you can cause trouble. The other person gets to know the real you in this moment. Not this is what I loved when I was a kid or I love ice cream. Mm -hmm. No, in this moment, this is what's happening for me right now. That's unusual. Most of us don't relate in present moment awareness. So naming mice is a way to do that. Hey, I notice as I'm with you, this is what I'm feeling. I'm feeling some excitement. I notice as I hear your story, I feel some sadness and some concern. So we start to be relational. And an example that came to mind is when I, I was once sitting with Jack Canfield at a luncheon. And even that took something. Like, how do you sit next to Jack when there are 150 people wanting to sit next to Jack? Sure. Well, this was accidental, but it's a great tip if you ever want to use it, listeners. I was chatting with him and they called us to lunch and I had to go to the bathroom. And I wanted to follow up with Jack and sit, sit next to him. And I just said, as I went, look, I got to go to the bathroom. Would you save me a seat? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Come on. So then when I got back, he'd had to turn 10 people away from the seat next to him because he was saving it for me. <laughs> so now I'm sitting with Jack and we're talking and I screwed up some courage. And I said, look, I wonder if you would consider writing the forward to my book, but here's where the transparent part came in. I felt a little off about it because I'd also was, was pitching Richard Branson. And if Richard said, yes, I was going to go with him. Yes. So I said, I screwed up my courage and I, I named a mouse. I said, Jack, and I just want to be transparent. I have asked Richard Branson. And if he says, yes, I'll, I'll go with him. And I know this is a big, bold request. Would you be willing to be my backup? If he says no and classic Jack, he said, well, I see you're going alphabetically and that makes sense. <laughs> oh, it just, it was amazing. But then that was out in the open and I didn't have to hide anything. And mm -hmm. I believe to this day that the fact that this is how I try and show up in every relationship, particularly when I might lose something is was what has so many people say, I trust this guy. Mm -hmm. You can trust this guy. You should have him on your podcast. Um, I've had women in my community ask a friend, if I go to a date at this house, can I trust this guy? And my community is going to say, yes, absolutely. And I think it's because I'll tell the truth, especially if I'm going to lose something. So don't just go and bleed over everybody and be like, you know, you're not going to go to the boardroom and say, we're running off a cliff. I'm freaking out. We've got no solutions and I don't know what to do. Ah! No, you're not going to do that. But you might work with your coach and then go to the boardroom and say, look, some of you might be scared in this current climate. I don't blame you. Sometimes I am too. But we are working on solutions and together we will find our way. Like there are ways to do it. Yeah. And, and David, I think, you know, it's been interesting for me to see I mean, if you look back in, you know, in business, certainly in corporate traditionally, uh, it was the exact opposite, right? You know, you didn't bring your whole self to, to, to work. You certainly didn't show your emotions. You didn't show weakness, like all these, all these things that, you know, I think used to be part of corporate culture and still unfortunately are in some places. But I, I think uh, the move towards transparency and authenticity, uh, the ability, you know, and it's, I think it's actually one of the advantages of social media, even though there are so many negatives, like, like people people sniff out like, and, and the, you know, and, and younger generations just don't tolerate inauthenticity anymore, whether it's in advertising, whether it's in, you know, management systems and whatever. And I think that's, you know, that's a good thing. And, um, and, and, and I, you know, um, my guess is when you coach people around this, that there is some folks that, you know, that might seem exciting to, but there are many who probably, you know, have a lot of resistance around this one. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a tough one to, because we've been so conditioned you know, we have, opposite. We, yeah. And I, I grew up as an Australian male in a country town. So I didn't learn transparency. I didn't know it was a thing you could do. 
it wasn't until I got to Landmark and I saw this leader on stage. And on the third day, he said, I'm terrified of people. And I'm terrified of speaking to groups. And he's, and he's in front of a hundred, <laughs> whatever people. He's doing, right? it for a, he's doing it for a living. Right. And part of me was admiring, like, wow, look what you're doing for a living of service. So I really felt closer to him. Another part of me was saying, you can say that? I didn't know you could say that. I had a friend come up to me once and say, oh my God, I've just realized something. I'm needy. Mm. But he wasn't saying it like it was a problem. He said, I'm needy right now. I'm needy. And that's okay. I didn't know you could say that. So it started a, a life journey for me of how much can you say? And you'd be surprised. Read the book, listeners, mouseintheroom.com. You'd be surprised how you can artfully say things. I've said things that could have sent me to prison. Literally, you know, I've, I've, I've broken the law in the past. Uh, when I was a minor, I committed a crime. And then later in life, I was horrified. And uh, I tracked down the person and confessed and said, look, I just want you to know that was me. And I'm really sorry. And how can I make it right? Could have gone to prison. But that conversation changed my life. Because I realized, you know, the person said, look, it really wasn't any big deal. We're fine. We're good. Oh, my God. So transparency is a doorway, yes, to making deals, but it's a doorway to a confident, um, fulfilling, and influential life. I want to give another example of transparency. And this is from Alex Mondosian, who's a genius marketer. And I know this podcast isn't specifically about making sales. And sales are, are a deal. I went to speak to 1200 people and then at the end you get to make a pitch, All right? So I wanted to make a deal with 1200 people. Mm -hmm. And what Alex said is don't hide the fact, don't hide what you want. Mm -hmm. Tell them up front. And this is an example of naming a mouse. So I, I said up front, I wanna do everything in my power to motivate, persuade and influence you to continue your training with me. Mm. I think I can really help you. And so the best way I can think of to do that is to give you the best content I can in 60 minutes and show you what's possible. And then you'll decide if you want to work with me. Does that sound fair? And they all went, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I had permission to sell to them and to pitch. Now this works in dating. You could say to someone, you know, I'm realizing I'd really like to date you. I'd really like to take you out and ask you out. Would that be okay? You're being, you're being transparent about what it is you want. You could call someone. I got this from Steve Sims, who's brilliant at the art of, uh, you know, getting someone to say yes to something. He said it'll yep. often lead with, up front, I want to tell you I have an ask. Right? Being transparent, I have an ask. But first, and then he gets into what he thinks he might be able to offer. Because if you, if you don't say that, people know you're probably going to come up with something. You're probably looking for something. Let's right. put it on the table. I would like to make a deal with you. That's my goal. At the end of this, that we can create a deal that's a win for both of us. Is that okay? Is that on the table? Can we talk about that? Way better than trying to sneak it in and get it under the radar and that's just my uh, alarm to tell me to stay on track and make sure I, I show up to my next appointment. But I've still got another another five minutes. Yep. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's jump into it. Uh, it's, it's interesting to me on that point because, yeah, it's especially, you know, I talk about all the time how many deals, uh, you know, are part of an ongoing relationship. And um and, you know, if you're not transparent up front, you know, and you pull something over in the negotiation and sign the deal, how is that going to play out in the, you know, in the ongoing relationship, you know? So I agree with you. It applies in business generally, applies in sales, it applies in deals, it certainly applies in relationships. I mean, I, I had been told actually out of a landmark course, um, somebody told me that my now wife of, uh, of almost 20 years, um, 
was looking to meet our ideal man. When one of the landmark courses, you, every quarter you pay a huge game, right? Uh, you know, and you have a team that supports you. Um, and uh, the first, you know, the, the, the first time we spent any time together, just we were introduced for another reason. Um, I said to her, you know, I hear you're looking for your ideal man. And I said, I said, can I say something that's there for me? She said, yes. I said, I, I think you're looking for me. So you want to talk about transparency. <laughs> Love it. It's a great story around that that some of the listeners have heard in other contexts, which I won't tell now. But um, okay, Love let's it. let's uh, let's jump in. Um, uh, so, is the book when is is the book available? When is it coming out? I know this podcast is going to air in March. Uh, the mini book is available now. We've already got a a, a preview that you can download. It's got uh, illustrations of six different categories of mice. We've yes. identified that you might want to name, and it'll get you started for sure. Um, by the time people are listening to this in March, the physical book may be out. But either way, go to mouseintheroom.com and you can either buy the book or you can join our campaign. We want this to be an Amazon bestseller. We're going to play the game uh, really just as a way of having a party and getting people together. I believe this book can change the world. It's it, more transparency is what I believe we need so that we can start to love ourselves more, love each other more. And it's not going to hurt our business either. So mouse in the room, whatever stage you get to that website, you can either join the campaign and help us promote it and get the thing out, or you can just get yourself a copy or you'll be able to get the trailer, the, the mini book that's already available. Excellent. And is there, uh, in terms of your, your coaching business, that kind of stuff, is there, is there another place you want people to go if they're interested? To oh yeah. Thanks. If you're interested in coaching with me, um, normally it's a business owner or, or an executive it doesn't have to be, but that's normally who I work with. And you're already successful in a number of areas. You just want to move probably faster with less time towards your goals. And you might want someone to challenge you on your goals and how you're showing up in the world. If that's you go to focus.ceo and go to the bottom of the page and apply for coaching. And I'll tell you up front, you will have to answer some probing questions before we get on the on a on a call because I want to know what you care about. Um, I want to know what your challenges are. I want to know how you sabotage yourself. I want to know all of that. It'll take you about five ten minutes to answer those questions, and then you'll go straight to my calendar and we'll do fifteen minutes on the phone and see if coaching even makes sense for you. It's, I'm not a fit for everybody, and not everyone's a fit for me. But in fifteen minutes. We can usually work it out and uh, I'd love to hear from you if you think I might be able to make a difference in your life and business. Excellent. My, my final question on the podcast, David, is always about my highest ideal in life, which is freedom. And for me, that ranges from freedom from all people from oppression in the world to the, the reason I'm an entrepreneur. I haven't had a boss in, in decades. Um, what does freedom mean to you and how does it impact your life and business? I wrote a book that was going to be called the four freedoms. Mm. And uh, I see financial freedom. I see geographical freedom mm. to be at wherever you want. I see time freedom to choose when to work and not. And I'm, I'm blessed to have all three of those. But the fourth I think is most important, which is emotional freedom. Mm. And that's where this next book comes in the mouse in the room, your freedom to realize who you are and what's going on inside. That's the first step. Most of us don't know. And then once you do realize it, artful ways to clue in the person you're relating with so that you can be more connected and bring light to those areas. And you may just find that you are modeling for them so that they now they feel more confident to bring more of themselves. Like, oh, since you said that, I wonder if I could share this. Now we're more related. So that fourth freedom, that's the big one I want for everyone. Another way of ca calling it, I don't normally call this because it can freak some clients out, but it's self-love yeah. is at the core of so much here. Can we actually have the freedom to love ourselves, warts and all? All good things stem from there. Love it. David Wood, thank you for being an amazing guest on the DealQuest podcast. My pleasure. Thank you, Corey.
You've been listening to Extraordinary Focus with David Wood. Now to achieve way more in less time, to double your business and your impact in the world, and to be an even more extraordinary entrepreneur and human, make sure you get your gift basket. It includes a cheat sheet to double your focus, a short video to implement the steps, and a free focus audit to identify the number one focus leak in your business and how to plug it. To get all three of these goodies, just go to myfocusgift.com. If you've gotten value out of this episode, tell your friends. And nothing says keep up the good work, David, like a review, which helps us climb in the rankings and reach more listeners. Now, let's be extraordinary.